properly setting your track tension and alignment. It's important, but it's not rocket science. If it's not on the sled tight enough, it's gonna ratchet around the drive sprocket. But if it's on there too tight, then you get excessive wear on things like sliders and idle wheel bearings. Now I've talked about track tension in the past. I got a couple of different thoughts I wanna share. I also just got a brand new tool from a company in the US. It's actually a really different approach to checking track tension. So I wanna try that out and I'll tell you guys what I see as its pros and cons. How's it going ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is David Clark and this is my old sled. All right, so track tension or how tight your track is around the rear suspension. And like a lot of the things you'll do on your sled, there's tons of different ways to do it. So a lot of guys will just sort of go by eye. They'll lift the back of the sled up, they'll tighten the track up until it's hanging down a little bit from the slider or the rail, maybe a quarter inch or a half inch. You know, some guys will say just enough to get my thumb between the track and the slider. Some guys will say just about the height of the guides on the inside of the track. And other guys will just kind of shrug when you ask them and just say, I just don't put it on too tight. Now, whatever friction there is in the rear suspension will actually rob a little bit of horsepower just turning the track. So some more experienced riders will actually run with their tracks loose from what the manufacturer recommends. So whenever I'm learning how to do something on the sled or whenever I do a video about how I did it, I always reference the manufacturer's spec whenever I can find it. So a torque spec, if it's how tight I did a bolt, or a deflection spec, if it's putting a belt or a track on. And that's not because I'm so experienced, it's actually the opposite. So for a lot of us, when we have those mechanical questions, we'll have that kind of go-to person. Maybe they're a mechanic or a millwright. You know, so you'll go to them and you'll say, okay, how tight am I supposed to do this bolt? And they'll say, well, just snug it up. And then you say, how snug? And they say, well, you want it tight enough, it's not gonna come out, but you don't want it so tight that you're gonna squish the seal. And then you're like, so how tight do I tighten the bolt? So once you've done a few tracks, you'll get an idea of how tight they're supposed to be. But until you do, it's always best to look up what your manufacturer says. So to measure the tightness of a flexible part like a drive belt or a track, something called deflection. That basically means when you exert a specific known amount of force on it, how much is it gonna move? Because the tighter it is, the less it's gonna move. There's lots of different tools that you can use. Anything that tells you how much force and how far is it moving. So a lot of guys, you could use a weight, right? A 10 pound weight and a tape measure to measure how far the track moves away from the slider. Uh, other guys will use a luggage scale. You pull down on the track with the luggage scale and use a tape measure to measure how far it moves. And there's some other specialty tools that I've shown you in other videos that, you know, on one end they'll have a distance scale, usually in inches, and on the other end they'll have a measure of force, usually measured in pounds. All right, so the tool I wanna to have a look at up on my snowmobile shelf, I just built the garage, so I'm still kind of excited that I have a snowmobile shelf. Okay, this is the ISAT gauge. And it's made by a snowmobiler in New Hampshire named Steve Hart. I love talking to the guys that send me these products, and there's always a story behind them. So Steve is a snowmobiler. He's been a snowmobiler since the 70s. He used to race sleds. You know, when you race sleds, you do your own work. The other thing that's really important in racing is track tension because you gotta get every bit of horsepower you can from the motor to the track. So yeah, this is something he's thought a fair bit about. All right, so I'll give you a close up on the tool. Pretty straightforward. You've got this threaded body with markings down it. You've got this T-block here that you can thread up and down. And then you have a piston inside with a red indicator mark on it. So let's have a look at how this works. The first thing you wanna do is look up the right tension setting for your track. Now, all the manufacturers express it differently. So Articat, I think, says, you know, so many inches at 20 pounds. Polaris says at 10 pounds, because obviously the more force you put on it, the farther it's gonna move. Skidoo will typically say 16 pounds. Next thing you have to do is get a sled lift like this or a piece of two by four. You need to get the sled up off the ground because you need clearance under the track to check it. That's one of the things that I don't like about using the luggage scale method is it needs to be high enough that you can pull down from underneath. So the instructions with the ISAT gauge say to give yourself about six inches of clearance under the track. So to do that for my machine, I had to put some wood underneath the lift. All right, so once we know our deflection setting, we'll have a look at the little chart that came with the tool. The markings on it go anywhere from one inch up to 2.75. So we find our deflection, then we know how to set the tool. We adjust the tension by moving the rear axle in or out. So the first thing you wanna do is loosen that axle bolt off. Now, periodically, I'll get people message me, say they're turning the track adjuster, which is this bolt in the front, and their track is not moving. It's because they haven't loosened this off. You check your tension in the middle of the track. Now my manual says halfway between the front and the rear idler wheels. Other manuals will say 16 inches forward from the rear idler wheel. 
So about here, just in front of this block. Okay, next thing I do, I'm gonna take the little T-block with the small part down and install it in the window closest to the center of the track. Then I'm gonna thread this tool in. I've already figured out that I'm gonna thread it into the 1.75 mark on the tool. I'm gonna to turn the track adjuster until that red mark is lined right up and flush with the top of that tool. All right, now I took the tool out. I'm gonna repeat the same process on the other side. You know, a lot of guys would look at my track and think I was running it too tight. You know, you see a lot of comments online, hey, running it looser is better, but that's a little bit simplistic. If you're on the track too loose, it can actually deform as it goes around the rear suspension. So it can either balloon out because of centrifugal force, or sometimes it'll just kind of bend in at the front. It can actually catch the front of the rails. Track alignment and track tension are closely related. If you did exactly the same thing on both sides, your track should be properly aligned. That's pretty easy to check. So you gotta spin the track a few times and then it's gonna find where it's aligned. Grab a tape measure, measure one side then the other. They should be the same, obviously. If they're not, then tighten the adjuster on the side that has more track or loosen it off a little bit on the one that has less or do a little bit of both. So overall, it's a super easy process, but there are a couple of details you need to know. So tools like this one or really any of the more traditional tools that you use for checking track tension or belt tension, they have a spring inside them and they basically work with something called Hooke's Law. And Hooke's Law basically says that the force required to deform a spring scales with the distance you're deforming it. In other words, the more you squish it, the harder you have to press to squish it more. So with this one, you don't press down on it with a varying amount of force. The amount the spring gets deformed is just dictated by the amount of deflection that you have set. All right, so the spring that's used in this tool is designed to work at 20 pounds, right? In other words, if I set the tool up like this, I select two inches. By the time I've adjusted my track tension enough to push that red mark flush, I've got two inches at 20 pounds of force. The one thing I did do to test the accuracy of the tool was to press down on the top of it with two other traditional tension meters, and it does take 20 pounds of force to move that red line flush. Now the thing is, my manual wants one and three eighths to one and three quarters at 16 pounds of force. If you have a Polaris, your manual may specify 10 pounds of force. There's a couple of ways to deal with that and they're not really that complicated. So the first one, if your manual calls for 10 pounds, like if you've got a Polaris, I think they, they do it in 10 pounds, half inch at 10 pounds or something. So we can't exert a different amount of force on this particular tool, but what we can do is increase or decrease the deflection a little bit to compensate because they're really just different ways of expressing the same thing. So if your manual calls for 10 pounds, then your deflection needs to be a little bit less. So you basically just flip that block upside down and now when you check your deflection, the track will be about a quarter inch further away from the slider. It gets a little bit more complicated if you have a skidoo. Basically, I just need to add a bit to my deflection because 20 pounds is going to move my track further than 16 pounds. Now, there's a formula that's included in the instructions. It's pretty straightforward. I'll put it on the bottom of the screen. Basically, once my track is adjusted, if 16 pounds moves at an inch and a half, then 20 pounds would move at 1.875. All right, so what are the pros and cons? What did I like about this tool and what didn't I like? First off, it's super easy to use once you've determined what the deflection is supposed to be. Just put it in the track and then you just adjust the track until that little mark lines up. The second thing I like about using a tool like this to check deflection as opposed to just eyeballing it is that it's consistent and repeatable on both sides. Because if you do exactly the same thing on both sides, then your track alignment should be right. So it should be running straight. And some of you older guys will appreciate this. I actually found this tool a little bit easier to see that big red mark on it versus the smaller black numbers on my other tools. Now with this style of tool, because it's sandwiched between the track and the slider when you're checking the tension, you can actually do it with the machine on its side. I like the fact that it's kind of hands-free, right? You just set it up in the track, dial the deflection in, and then you just go and turn your adjusters until it's right. On the con side, there's a few, I mean, there's no numerical markings on the tool, but then again, they're all in quarter inch increments, so that's not that difficult. That same limitation with markings makes it a little bit difficult if you wanted to set this to something specific, like 1.875. You can get it pretty close, but I really question the need to be that specific. Now, being a Skidoo owner, I can't say I love the fact that I had to use a formula to adjust my deflection to use the tool, but it was a pretty simple formula. So overall, what did I think of the tool? I gotta say, I liked it. I found it was a really easy to use, hands-free way to check the track tension in a consistent, repeatable manner. I did find it a little bit confusing at first, but that's because I was trying to compare how this tool works compared to some of the other ones I've used. When I forgot all about that and just set it at 1.5 and set the track tension, it was super easy to use. 
I'll put a link to the website in the description, but right now this is under $50, so it's not gonna break the bank, and it makes a pretty good gift for the snowmobiler that has everything. All right, but like I said, there's a lot of different ways to do it, so it's always nice to hear from you guys. So post something in the comments, let me know how you adjust your track tension. Oh hey, there's one more thing I wanted to do before I forget. Let's go outside for a sec. All right, we're finally starting to get some snow. We don't have enough to ride, if you look at the ground. If you remember last video, I said that the slides had just been sitting and I was kind of hoping they would start. Let's find out. I feel pretty good about it. Rarely has this old sled let me down. All right, before we try it, I just want to point out I've done nothing to this thing. I haven't even pulled the spark plugs out of it. It's just been sitting all summer. Now, the one thing I did do is I spent a couple of minutes pumping the primer. I always have to do that every year. Just the primer dries out a little bit. The gas drains out of all the lines. But now the gas is up into the primer. I've got a little bit in the line heading down to the carb and we're ready to go. I've rolled her out as close to the door as I can because after sitting that long, I have a feeling it's going to smoke a little bit. You know, I gotta say, it's not computerized, it's not fuel injected, it's old and it's rusted. I gotta tell you, once it wakes up for the winter, All right, guys, that's it for another video. If you liked it, do me a favor, hit thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, take it a second and do that. If you click that little bell icon, then you'll get notified when I post a new video. Until next time, I'm David Clark. Thanks for taking the time to watch. So to measure the tight list, so the point of it is, I'm bleeding, blood thinners. With this one, the amount, this, this,